person who stood up in a meeting and said, you know, I would like to give $100 to this project, but I would like to do it anonymously. No, not, not like that, no. And then notice it says, he who leads, do it with diligent. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. And, and so those are the seven gifts. And, and what I interpret Paul to be saying is this. If you want to know the will of God, if you want to know where you fit, you must know yourself and you must know where you fit and how you serve within the body. So what Paul is really saying is, first of all, you submit and then you serve. And that's the order. Now let's look at the continuation of these verses. Paul now goes on to show that we should support one another because remember, we are not a law unto ourselves. I pick up the text in verse 9. Let love be without hypocrisy. There is a kind of love that is very hypocritical. There is a kind of service that, that does it out of a sense of duty but pretends that the, it is being done out of love. Abhor what is evil. My, that text in itself could be a message today. Uh, rather than loving what is evil, we should abhor it and cling to what is good. Be devoted one to another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor. Not lagging back in diligence, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality, Bless those who persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind. What's Paul getting at? What he's saying is, is that it isn't enough simply to serve. He says you must serve in relationship to the entire body. He says you must serve to support others. You must serve in such a way that you become concerned about the other cells of the body that are around you because we are working at this together. Now, looking at your Bible one more time in the 12th chapter, I want you to notice something. In chapter 12, verse 1, he said, present your bodies a living sacrifice. In verse 4, he talks about the body of Christ. He says, for just as we have many members in one body and all the members do not have the same function, so also, though we are many, are one body in Christ. What Paul seems to be saying is that the reason we should give our bodies to God is because our bodies are actually the body of Jesus Christ. This is Christ on earth. You and I are Christ on earth. I don't mean to say at all that we are divine like Christ is, but we are his representatives. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. We are that body. Now, the human body heals itself. In fact, the, the ability of the body to heal itself is, is awesome. It is, it is something that scientists can't explain. Because, you see, they can create various elements. They can, they can put something together that is perhaps as strong as a bone. But when it breaks, it can't heal itself. Yet God has given the body the ability to heal itself so that if it functions properly, it can be healthy and strong and impact society and to impact the world. I want us to consider for a moment the body gathered. The body gathered. That means us together on Sundays, during the week, small groups. That's the body gathered. The reason that the body gathers is to grow and become strong. So that if you have a broken bone, it is our responsibility to restore you, to help you to fix it. And some of you have slipped in life, haven't you? You may have slipped morally or you have slipped spiritually and, and you feel as if you are now no longer a part of the body or that, or that you can never really be restored in a full sense to the body. It's our responsibility to help you to do that. You know, Paul says in Galatians that if any of you fall, 
says, if anyone is overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual, restore such an one with a spirit of meekness and with a recognition that you yourself might be tempted. Well, this is Pastor Lutzer, and I've often thought of the fact that if we really implemented that verse, if when we see someone overtaken with a fault, if we were to go in humility and discuss, recognizing that we could do the very same thing, there would be such healing that would take place within the body. And we'd discover that feelings of anger or resentment or jealousy would be taken care of. And I believe that the body of Jesus Christ would be so strong that our impact in the world would be much more noticeable and much more permanent. Well, I conclude today by asking you a simple question. Are you willing to open your life to God and say, God, you show me what needs changing? Thank you, Dr. Lutzer. Erwin Lutzer has given us part two of Finding Your Priorities, the third message in his series, Finding Where You Fit. Tomorrow, join us as Pastor Lutzer wraps up this study in Romans chapter 12. This series can help all of us make sure we're plugged in where God wants us to serve. All four messages can be yours on CD, cassette, or MP3. For full information, call toll-free at 1-800-215-5001. That's 1-800-215-5001. Ask about finding where you fit when you call. Running to Win comes to you from Chicago's Moody Church. Write to us at Running to Win, 1609 North LaSalle Boulevard, Chicago, Illinois, 60614. Don't forget, this broadcast is supported by listeners like you. This is Dave McAllister. Join us for tomorrow's Running to Win.